Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the seventh conference organized by Women in Airspace Europe Barcelona during this course. Today is a special day for this organization, but also for all women that day by day fight for their human rights. For decades, women's rights have been violated at work, at home, and on the streets. And there are still cases of women's rights violations in the current society. 8M exists to remember all the battles and successes of women among years, but also to remember that there is a still a long way to go. And Women in Airspace Barcelona is on that way, making a small but firm steps to a future of equality. I am Judith Hernandez, and now I am going to introduce you our today's speaker, Nuria Salan. Welcome, Nuria, and thank you for joining us today. Nuria. Good afternoon, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Nuria holds a PhD in metallurgical engineering. She is also a professor at the UPC and deputy director of her center. And also, she is president of the Societat Catalana de Tecnologia. Today, She's going to talk about the unknown scientific and technological discoveries made by women, which have been camouflaged in mainstream history. If you have any questions, you can write them in the chat during the presentation, and we will manage them after Nuria's speech. Enjoy this talk. Nuria, it's your turn. Okay, thank you very much, Judith. Uh, well, I'm going to share my screen with you, so. Okay, if everything is okay, you are now uh, viewing my screen. Uh, I, let me to talk about the invisible ingenuity. The invisible ingenuity is, uh, is my speech by talking about uh, the, um, the disappeared inventors from history, because these disappeared inventors are always women. Women inventors are never known, never, never explained, and never highlighted in textbook for our children. So this is the reason for which uh, all our students, our young generations never, never know the answer about, please tell me about a female inventor. And then tell me Marie Curie, but Marie Curie, she was a scientist, not an inventor. That's the reason for my speech. So this is me. This is Nuria Salan, my, my name, and I'm teaching at this uh, university. It, this is like a, a collection of hours because I'm very old, and this is the, 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 the natural way for when, when uh, you are um, um, having a lot of years and a lot of things uh, uh, develop it. But this is me. I prefer to introduce myself in this way. This is me. I'm a teacher. In met I'm teaching in metallurgy, and... I love metals. I love working with metals. Uh, I'm passionate of, of, of uh, metals uh, um, construction and metals, metals production. And I'm a blacksmith in my free time. This is me in my blacksmith role. And all these men have watched that kind of such of, of, of programs, um, uh, fire forget or similar similars like this. And, uh, they are uh, trying to to to, to uh, a knife or a sword because they think it's really easy. And sometimes they are, they are surprised because the blacksmith uh, teacher, the maestro, is uh, Guillermina. She is a woman, and the the assistant of the blacksmith professor Smith, uh, two women, two women, but. For us, this is so normal. Guillermina and me are working with this a lot, a lot of time, many, many time ago. And I love also bakery. I love cakes and cookies. And this is the most nice and complicated cake I've, I ever done. So if I'm able to, to do, um, to make for me a, a grid for my window or this, a cake or reading a book like this novel, I can do everything. So I love to, to show myself in this way because sometimes scientists look like some bored people and I think I'm not bored people. 
And I love a lot of things, not only science, not only technology, but everything in life. This is me in a party time because, of course, we need to, to enjoy also. And these are my daughters and my granddaughter and my parents and my sisters because I have a normal life. I'm, I'm a very normal people. And this is a very important uh, um, moment in my life. All these young uh, people decided the, the name of their laboratory, technology laboratory, um, they decided the name was Nuria Salan Lab. This is my lab in a high school in Menorca, in Ciutadella. When I was 12 years old, uh, at my parents' home, there was only one encyclopedia, only one book. In that, there was only one female name in science, in STEM, uh, in technology, engineering, and mathematics. It was the only one name, Marie Curie. When I was 12 years old, I was afraid because uh, I thought I was uh, I would be the, the the second scientist in the history because in in that book was only one name. So I thought, okay, I will be the next one, so the second in history, and I was terrified about this. And um, by by watching this uh, picture, is oh, if it, if it could be possible to talk to that years old girl and say, don't worry, everything will be okay. Everything will be so fantastic. It would be nice, but okay, this is me. And uh, I, I want to talk a little about the, the women science and technology career because this race has been very, very complicated for men, but also for women. And I think a little more, more difficult for women because women, um, History highlights this and these uh, problems for women for overcome a lot of obstacles uh, in for achieving the, the normal positions because it was complicated for men but a little more complicated for women. We will be remembered as STEM centuries: science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I love. Uh, definition, uh, the, 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 the simplest definition of engineering is how to solve a problem with ingenuity. I love this definition. And uh, the, the skills you need, the skills you need for, for performing uh, engineering uh, activities is to identify the problem and in doing so, how to find the, the best way of solving this problem with creativity, with flexibility, with, a, with an international file. And of course, the knowledge in science and technology uh, will help you for, for reaching the, this goal. But in this uh, collection of skills, I can't identify this profile could be applied for a man or for a woman, but sometimes, Sometimes in history, sometimes women have listened words. This is not suitable for you. And especially related to engineering. Engineering is not suitable for women. That's a that's an, an stupid sentence. But the problem is many, many, many uh, generations of women have believed it. And they decided not to uh, study, sorry, and they, they decided not to apply to STEM positions or not, or not apply to STEM uh, studies. And the result of this is if we doing a search about uh, the most characters in, in STEM, in, uh, in STEM, the most names. Uh, would be Da Vinci or Einstein or Gaudí. Everybody knows who were these, uh, these uh, people, these characters. Everybody knows it. But, and, oh, so, sorry, and um, the, the knowledge about these uh, characters is so high. And also in textbook, when we find about um, 
we we're doing a, a search about the adventures profile because you know is the most uh, sexy profile in, in science uh the adventures in textbook for our children are usual names like gutenberg with the print or uh franklin with the rod lamp or volta with the battery and they are they were very important inventors, uh, of course, and about the visibility of and the knowledge related to the pioneers of uh, engineering or science or architecture, like three, may, three men I talked before, or this inventor, take a look at these numbers, million of entries in Google. When you put the name, you enter under the name, you can see this number. This number is like an indicator of the visibility or the knowledge related to that name. Millions, 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 and about the millions, millions, millions of numbers. And I agree they are important. And I agree about this visibility, but STEM women have been invisible in history. So it's very difficult for us to find some, some information not in textbook, not in history, not in formal history. Of course, now we can find some novels or some books, but they are complementary uh, bibliography, not mandatory uh, textbook. And uh, in Wikipedia, in Wikipedia, there are a lack of contents uh, about uh, female scientists or female inventors. So this lack of models or examples for young generations have been uh, surrounded like a like a top secret uh, myth, but I, I didn't understand never why why these names have been disappeared from textbook. Talk about some names related to this. Have you ever listened about Mary the Jewish? Mary the Jewish was the first alchemist woman in history, and the the female the male. Um, um, alchemists in, uh, in, in their time, they talk about Mary and the, the processes developed by Mary. And the most famous maybe the Bain Marie or the Mary's bath, you know, is the, the, the first isothermical bath or the first uh, non-directed uh, heating process. You know, in Marie, you put some water on the, on the uh, hot point and then the water is never more than 100 uh, celsius degree so anything you put inside the, the water uh, independently of the temperature of the of the heating point where everything you put in the water will be 100 degree that's all this is the bain maria of the mary's bath the name of the bain maria of the mary's bath is is because mary the mary the jewish was the inventor that's the reason for the name. I, I'm all, I love to, to, to do a, a, a joke about this. If it, if it was a man who was the inventor of the Bain Marie, it could be called Bain uh, Manolo. And that's not the, the reality. And take a look about the visibility of uh, Mary the Jewish. He's really far from a million. That's the reason, because I talk about the invisible ingenuity. What about Hypatia? Hypatia of Alexandria. She was the first mathematics and um, mathematics and uh, um, astronomy woman in history. She was the inventor of the astrolabius. But the name of Hypatia is always disappeared from textbook and for formal history. So a few years ago, uh, Amenabar he did a, a movie Agora and. After the movie, everybody knows about the, 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 the role of Hypatia and the, the, cost, the character of Hypatia. But previous to that movie, the name was absolutely unknown. And Hypatia is disappeared from textbook and take a look about the, the visibility in Google. It's really far from million, really far. Bingen, Hildegard of Bingen, she was the, 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 the feminine Da Vinci, Da Vinci, uh, the feminine version of Da Vinci, because she was an expert in everything. She was uh, a writer and poetry, and uh, 
musical composer and philosophist and uh, a pharmaceutic and um, uh, medicine expert. She she did about everything. She know uh, she knew about everything, but the name is this from textbook from history. She's the inventor of the beer because she talked about the addition the, about if the if you consider the addition of hop in uh, in the drink in in, in the, the liquid drink, this new uh, drink uh, will be safe for many many months. That's the reason. Now at this moment, the normal beer is with a hop addition. So. Uh, the inventor of the beer was Hildegard of Ringen, but the name is never appear in a Wikipedia when you are doing a search about the history of beer. Uh, she was living in the Middle Age, and in the Middle Age, if, if you remember, when somebody is um, uncomfortable for society, anybody could say, oh, the, she's a witch. Then uh, she, the, the final of the of that uh, woman was the, the the fire, you know. So that's the reason Hildegard of being known. To be to being unknown, it was the only way for keeping safe of the no the own knowledge. So uh, by looking forward in history, we can identify easily a lot of um, a lot of knowns in history. And the reason was because it was the only way for keeping far from the fire. It's very, it's, it's so sad. They had to try or free and a witch or uh, uh, Sabia, I, I don't know exactly the name now, and uh, known. And take a look about the visibility, it's just 200 million, uh, 200,000. My three pioneers, uh, altogether is close to a quarter of million, but far from a million of entries you know, po of posts in, uh, in Google. And uh, visible ingenuity, all these names are disappeared from textbook. Mary Anderson, she was the inventor of Whipper. The Whipper in, in, in our cars is, is the best way for keeping us safe. She was the inventor of the patent. This is the, the patent document with the name Mary Anderson. And the, the name of Mary Anderson has never appeared in uh, books for my students in engineering. And he was a very, very genius inventor. Or Josephine Cochrane. Josephine Cochrane was the inventor and the designer of the first, the first washing machine. And the reason was not for not washing at, uh, dishes at home because she was a rich woman. She never washes the dishes. But the reason the 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 the, the reason that the 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 force uh, the late motive for developing this was because she. Uh, want to keep sure about the, the cleaning conditions of the dishes, because if it's uh, not correctly washed, there are some um, some um, microorganisms, and then you put some food on the microorganisms, and you can have a problem. So Josephine Cochrane is disappeared from textbook, or as well as uh, Mary Anderson or Viola Louis Henry. Viola Louis Henry is the most um, prolific uh, inventor in history. She was the inventor of the vacuum ice freezer when she was 25 years old, uh, the foldable umbrella, the security uh, open, open can opener, the linotype. The linotype is the, was the first machine for doing copies, or the uh, paper pin or the zip bag, and a, a lot of uh, inventions. She was more than 100 of inventions and uh, more than uh, close to 50 patents. But the name of Beulah Louis Henry is completely disappeared from textbook. And Hedy Lamar, Hedy Lamar, she's known as an actress. 
and as a very sexy woman, but not as an inventor. The history of Hedy Lamar is really, really nice. And I, I can suggest to you the, the vision of the bombshell um, movie. It was uh, developed by uh, Susan Sarandon. Um, and the history of Hedy Lamar is uh, a history of a woman who was always remembered by, by her face, not but not by, by her brain. She was the inventor of the secret system of communication. That secret system of communication was uh, the pro provides the protocol for um, how to identify some frequencies for communication with the wire. So it was the first protocol for developing the wireless connection. So Wi-Fi, GPS, or Bluetooth are possible because of the invention of Hedy Lamar. But the name is completely disappeared from telecommunications book. My, my daughter, the elder, she's uh, a telecom telecommunications engineer, and she never knew about uh, Hedy Lamar as I talked to her. To her. And Stephanie Kohler, Stephanie Kolek, Stephanie Kolek was a chemist, and she was uh, working for uh, Dupont, and she was trying to find an option from nylon, you know. And she identified a new polyam polyamida, a new polyamide, and that polyamide, the name was Kevlar, was stronger than steel. And that polyamide in fibers could be designer in, as a cloth, but this cloth is, was, it was very, very hard to cut and very, very hard to, 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 to hurt. So uh, a, a cloth uh, and, uh, and a jacket with this uh, polymer, this with this cloth uh, is a very is very helpful in uh, as an in army because it, it can stop a bullet. So I'm talking about the Kevlar as a, as a, one of the best inventions for humanity. But she never was awarded by a Nobel. Uh, and if you want, we can talk about the Nobel history and the history of Nobel about against the um, in front of women inventions or the women. Uh, um, discoveries and all these names have been invisible from history and from our history and from our process of uh, learning because never uh, nobody was talked to us uh, nobody talked to us about uh, and about inventions when we were child also nowadays uh, during these two last years <clears throat> in pandemic I never heard about Letitia Monforgier. Letitia Monforgier was this young nurse and she was the designer and the inventor of the seating. Yeah, the seating. And Catalin Carico, she was the designer and the inventor of the first protocol of uh, uh, RNA modified uh, vaccine. Yeah, the COVID vaccine. She was working with uh, uh, AIDS a vaccine because it's a different vaccine from normal without, without uh, it's a non-viric vaccine. Uh, the the I, AIDS and also the, the COVID. And Moderna, Moderna is the name of the, the, the first vaccine, but the Moderna means mode RNA, the, the modification of RNA. And during all these two years, I never heard about Catalin Carico and her uh, knowledge or her research. And what about Margarita Salas? Margarita Salas was the developer of PCR. PCR was the, the, the PhD work of Margarita Salas, the polymerase chain reaction. And I think we can heard about million and million and million of PCR tests, but never related to the name venture. So all these names have been disappeared from broadcast media. And that's the, 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 the point now in 2022. And the, the values about the visibility of these ventures, take a look to the, to the numbers. Josephine Cochrane, do you remember the wash dishwasher machine inventor? Less than half million. Or Mary Anderson, the wiper inventor, or is a very, very low value, or Beulah Louis Henry, more than 100 of inventions, and take a look to the number. It's really, really 
but uh, visibility or Hedy Lamar. Oh my God, less than half a million. And Stephanie Kolek with the Kevlar, the polymer stronger than steel. Oh my God. Or Catalin Carico and, uh, and the, the vaccine, the COVID vaccine, or Letitia Moon for gear with the sitting or Margaret Salas, oh well, she's exceptional because it's uh, uh, 14, 14 million, but the name, the name has been disappeared or uh, never mentioned in broadcast media. All in aerospace. In aerospace, it's easy to find these names. Wait a minute. <coughs> All these names have been appeared easily <coughs> in all in a lot of programs. Men in space, the main characters are always uh, present in movies and in history. Take a look to Buzz Aldrin, is is very, very known, five million in Google, or Pedro Duque, the Spanish, uh, the Spanish um, aerospace man. So the more than 100 million of, of, of uh, entries of posts in, in uh, internet. But what about these names? Can you identify the names by looking the faces? Because in the previous slide, uh, it's easy to identify the names uh, because the faces, because all they have been present in movies, in, uh, in um, uh, the Simpsons characters, or in every way. But who are these women? Of course, you know uh, the names is Valentina Tereshova, May Jamison, and Margaret Hamilton. But visibility is much lower than men visibility. Take a look to these values. Valentina Tereshova, a little more than half a million. Margaret Hamilton, close to one million. Oh my God. And May Jamison, also close to a million. But it's... Um, I don't think it's, uh, it's injustice the, 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 the values uh, and how to say, uh, I think in my opinion, they would, uh, how to say, oh my God, I forgot just the, the word they want to say. Um, they worth uh, higher visibility than they have in, in uh, actually in, in media or in or in internet because they worth it but it's it's hard to to get uh, this visibility because the history all the history have been written and developed and uh, all the the humanity uh, uh, improvements have been developed by men and by women working together but the names in history the highlighted names in history were only the men names because the women have been always in the back of the picture. And it's difficult to remember the names or the faces or the goals when they are in the back of the picture. And without these references, with this lack of models and with all this talent uh, invisible, and all this talent hidden is normal. We can we, we, we can consider now the lack of vocations and the gender gap. And by gender gap, I'm talking about this. At this moment, in all type of and all profiles of studies at university are more or less 50% men and women. But in uh, in health science is very high. The, the percent of women, but not in STEM. In STEM, take a look to the values, less than 30%. And uh, this is not a good goal because uh, in, uh, in society we are 50-50. So we need the talent of women by solving problems in technology because we, women, are the 50% of the technology users. So that's the reason I'm talking about this. And, for example, this is my university. My university is a, a tech university, and uh, the only studies are, the studies are only in engineering profiles or uh, tech uh, ICT profiles or in architecture profiles. 
So uh, all uh, each column is a department, and the red part is the percent of men. This is my university. And 30 years ago, when I was starting working in this university, I thought, okay, maybe in 30 years, this uh, picture will be like a, like a football club Barcelona uh, uh, um, T-shirt, but we are far from this. <clears throat> and this is really a problem because we need all talents, men, but also women talents. And we are working hard for change. And for this reason, uh, I've been involved in a lot of projects by highlighting the names and the, and the discovers and the inventions of these women, especially the names. And uh, I'm doing a lot of efforts for including the names in books, in textbooks, and in history, and in Wikipedia. So I'm working hard with Orange Foundation, with Fibra Cat, with Sandra Uwe, she's the author of uh, Super Women, Super Women book. And I love this, uh, this movie, this movie and the history. And I was really, really happy when I got the opportunity of knowing, of, uh, uh, knowing about uh, Margaret Hamilton, of meeting her when she was a uh, doctor honoris causa at uh, university. So I'm identifying uh, exhibitions or movies or books for talking with this material, with the, all these uh, to children about the, the visibility of uh, women of, and the visibility of the ingenuity of women. So when everything is done, everything is done. And uh, at this moment, if we are talking about scientists and we put scientists in Google, the first image would be sure, for sure, um, men and women working together because it's the, the natural way for scientists. But in inventors, the image uh, that is absolutely needing to, 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 to be the first one is this one. But of course, if you put inventor in Google, the first image is a man, is a man face. So we need to highlight this, this uh, uh, relationship between inventors and children, happy children, happy children working together, both boys and girls, because it's the future. Uh, the reason for me for talking to you about this is because there are a lot of names and a lot of characters and a lot of history invisible and unknown because uh, it, have been, it has been considered an essential, but in my opinion, the names must be visible and well-known because the history is essential. Kamala Harris said, we are here because all the women that were before history, that's true. So we are here because there were a lot of women working in science, in technology, in engineering and mathematics. So my only one goal is highlighting the names and recovering the names and the history because I think it's, it's a, a must, I must do it. My objective, no more invisible ingenuity. The reason of the, of the practice is because I want to keep this out and I want visible ingenuity in the future. And that's all. Thank you very much. And any comment or question you can uh, you can consider it, it would be my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Nuria. Thank you for bringing all of those uh, so far unknown women closer to us. Uh, it, we all know that it's this way, but it still feels incredible. But I have to say I'm optimistic. I think we have a lot of women among us today here present, but also uh, just uh, with us in women in our space that will hopefully be remembered in the future. And um, yeah, thank you for the work you do, uh, bringing that uh, out, uh, that the situation is like this and making everyone aware of that. I think you are a very good reference already. Uh, for many, and I'm sure many present today here are or will be one day a good reference too. And I'm sure they have plenty of interesting questions for you. So I would encourage everyone to just uh, write your questions uh, on the chat. I'll try to keep an eye on that. The chat has disappeared for me now. Okay. 
So yeah, please feel free to to uh, write your questions for Nuria in the chat. And uh, usually people are a little bit shy at the beginning. So I'll start myself with the first question. Uh, or no, we already have one. Okay. So we'll start with the first question from the audience. Uh, when and why did you decide to work on giving visibility to scientific women? Well, there is always a starting point. My starting point was related to a non-destructive test uh, class. I was preparing my, my speech and um, I decided to introduce the first X-ray image in history because I, I was talking about X-ray as a non-destructive uh, test method. And the first X-ray uh, image uh, in history is the, the hand of the wife or Mr. Roenhen. You know, Willem Roenhen was the, uh, the winner of the first uh, physics uh, Nobel Award in history. And there was, a, when I watched the, the picture, I said, okay, is a, is a, a woman uh, hand and i remember my colleague uh, in, in my uh, in my office in my <clears throat> in my office at the university said why do you know is a is a woman hand because there are the ring the wedding ring and by means of the of that picture they the the Rohan, um, couple develop the relationship between uh, the, that unknown radiation that was the reason of X but because it was unknown and <clears throat> the relationship between or the interaction of this uh, radiation with uh, the, 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 the matter. And I talked to my students about uh, that hand and the disappeared name of the owner of the hand. And of course, if, she, if the hand of that woman was there, was because she was working hard with Mr. Röntgen, but the, the winner of the, the, the award was only for Mr. Röntgen, and he never took uh, the colleague or the wife in, in his speech. And I did a search of the name, and I found the name, Berta Lutic. Berta Lupic was the owner of the hand. A picture. I, I say, hey guys, I have the name of the owner of the hand. The 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 name the, the that hand is now uh, the the owner of this hand is not invisible. Now is visible, and they asked me about more histories like this, and I was. Uh, doing search about uh, Kevlar history or about the Wi-Fi history. And I was talking to them as a joke. And I said, okay, I think I can put all them together in a speech. And I tried to explain in a <clears throat> chronological way and they love it. So the starting point was my classroom on non-destructive uh, uh, tests. And I want to say to you, that sometimes when I am doing my research and I found some history related to an unknown woman, I get angry because, oh my God, and I get so furious. And okay, okay, keep calm and explain the history in the best way. That's the reason now I'm presenting a, a, a TV entertainment uh, entertainment uh, program in Fudaka TV every week is a weekly program in which I'm talking every week about an inventor, a female inventor, or an unknown uh, scientist, or an unknown or a disappeared name. So I changed my 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 working my my way of working. Now I don't get angry. I say, okay, I got it. That's all. Thank you. That is, uh, I think you do a great research work looking for all these stories that, that would otherwise yeah, have, have been kept uh, invisible. Another question, uh, more if you can help us on how we can contribute to provide visibility to women from uh, our day-to-day -day work. I think the best way is uh, 
when somebody asks to you about, can you provide to me an example? Instead of talking about Einstein, maybe talk about uh, Margarita Salas. I think we need to, we need to switch our uh, criteria. So at this moment, when somebody asks to me, maybe you can help they talk to me about an important history, an, an important uh, name of character in, in science history, I always talk about any one of, of these uh, female inventors. So I think you can, you can uh, do it by talking about them and by explaining histories to children or to your colleagues like a joke. Did you know about and make the history? And you can do a search there, are a lot of uh, webs or, or apps by talking short, brief stories about these uh, women. And I think this is a, is a question of every one of us. We can do it. That's great, yeah. We, we should all contribute and yeah, things since then will one day uh hopefully start being different. Related to that, we have a couple of questions uh, looking at uh, our male colleagues. Uh, one is uh, directly asking uh, the, the reaction of your male colleagues regarding the, the change you want to happen. <laughs> on depending on the male. <laughs> if they're supporting or not. Yeah, um, the, the, the most common reaction is uh, uh, um, a supporting, uh, a supporting uh, um, a supporting aspect or supporting task with me and they help me and if they know about uh, the name of uh, a woman or an event Nuria I found this I think you you it would be helpful for you this is the most common uh, and the most supporting uh, um, behavior but sometimes I found that um, it's, it's, it's not a colleague usually is an astrolopithecus who said are you sure she, was she are you sure? I don't think so. So um, I, I can ignore that. Uh, that uh, that's not a supporting behavior, and I can ignore these these <laughs> comments. And I hope these comments come from from other generations that we are. Not, not especially. No. Not, not always. Okay. Not always. Not always. There are, young, be... there are young Australopithecus. Okay, that then would be the question. How do we address the, the young boys uh, to be part of this change? I think that the young boys, uh, it is important to explain to them uh, about the relevance of, of talking about these forbidden names, names. because this uh, forbidden of forgotten, sorry, these hidden names. Because sometimes they say, okay, now it's everything the same, all the days you're talking about women and women and women. And it's important to talk to them about, uh, for many centuries, these women have been hidden in history. And that's the reason for, uh, for highlighting, because we need to equilibrate the history and the, the, the knowledge. And they understand when you, when you make them to 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 are part of the of the history and the and the solution, they committed, and that's my experience. So at this moment, the young uh, boys in schools they are helping me to develop some uh, some activities or morals, and they are glad to to providing some information to me. No, I found this. I found this. So I think it's the, the, the best way, in my opinion. We're asking a little bit on this line, if you think that we should, uh, if, if it would make sense to change the, the curriculum for the school program to give women the recognition they, they deserve. For sure, for sure, because, oh, the serve was the, the word I was looking for. <laughs> oh, <laughs> perfect, thank you. Um, for sure, the first thing we need to change is the textbook. The textbook is at, at this moment uh, with no one women reference name. So we need to change this. We need to change the, the model's name and providing men and women names. For, this is the starting point. And I think we need to talk about female inventors as a natural way when our children are young because when, when 
girls are close to 10 years old is a special moment for them, for girls, because they are thinking about uh, when, I, when I will grow up, I will be. And at this moment is a special moment for providing some models or references for them. And I think it's important to talk about the goals and the, the, the discovers and the, the inventions from women because they can consider, okay, that woman is my model, that woman is my reference. Maybe in the future she will change the model or the referent. But, but it's important to provide some references or some models when they are young, especially for girls, is my opinion. So talking about, about girls, uh, I'm, I'm trying to picture you now as a little child. Did you back then already know what you wanted to, to become, uh, what you wanted to work on in the future? Yes, yes. Yesterday I was with a young girl and the mother and the father were juniors, were my students, the mother and the father. And she's now 11 years old. And she said to the mother in front of me yesterday, okay, I'm deciding in the future, I will be a junior, but not for you or, or, or my father. I won't be a junior because Nuria. Oh my God, that's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. Young, young uh, girls and young boys usually agree this uh, information and, and they are so, so, so happy for knowing about this and for being part of the solution because they are part of the solution, of course. So it was, was also your case when you, when you were a child too, you also had uh, some, some figure oh, when, to? When, when I was a child, my, mo my mother was a man because my only more at home my parents they, they were workers uh, they they were blue collar workers and uh, in the school my 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 teachers the, the the female teachers they were awful so the the first uh, model was my chemistry uh, teacher in high school and he was a man but he was in passion by everything he did. And I said, okay, I want this. And when I started to study chemistry, that was my career. And at the moment I need to decide uh, that which will be the specialty I need to choose. The metallurgy teacher was also passionate about talking about the metallurgy. I, said, okay, I want this passion. So my models was men. My models were men. When I was a child, the only name in my book was Marie Curie, but surrounding me, there were no models in engineering. That's the reason I never started engineering because I never knew about engineering um, till, we, uh, till I was uh, finishing my, my grade, my chemistry grade, uh, baccalaureate. So that's the reason I want to talk to, to children when they are young because they need to choose the options with all the knowledge. They, they, they need to know all the, all, all the options for choosing in um, friendly and, and freely, in my opinion. So it's great. And, and I, think, I think you've done an amazing job becoming, becoming a reference yourself for, for many, many children uh, currently. So maybe to, to conclude, uh, I, th I think you've already given quite a lot of messages today, but uh, maybe uh, some, some final words. Uh, what, what, what message would you like to transmit to the new generations? Like we're giving you 30 seconds for a quick message. Uh, what, what would it be? Uh, if your girl say to you, I want to be an engineer, say, okay, great. Never ask it about why, because they can think about she's wrong. Because for a boy, this is a question. When a boy say, I want to be a junior, nobody asks why. So never ask your, your girl about why she wants to be a junior. Just say, okay, it's great. I think those were uh, perfect words uh, to, to conclude. Uh, I, I have a message. We have someone from, from uh, Women in Aerospace Europe, uh, besides a group from Barcelona here today. And uh, she's uh, mentioning, oh, the chat just moved, sorry. She's mentioning that they are, uh, they've 
well, Women Aerospace Europe has launched a group uh, to write a white paper on the visibility of women of experts. And the focus is on giving visibility of women who are experts now. And your presentation and work is, is a great addition to that. Uh, uh, maybe we can uh, keep the contact on that direction. Of course, you, you can count on me, of course. That uh, as well, yeah. Uh, there are a lot of things uh, in the chat. Uh, if you want, you can have uh, some time to read them after all. But uh, I think everyone has been uh, really interested about your talk. And then we've learned a lot of things we didn't know about a lot of interesting women. And as I said, I, I hope that, that many of the ones present here today will one day also be uh, probably have more entries in, in, in Google uh, than uh, Buzz Aldrin or Pedro Duque, uh, as you have shown. So I really uh, look for a, for a better future where, where we have all more visibility. So thank you very much for, for putting your, for your time uh, to, to, to do this, this visibility job. Uh, you're doing something really amazing that is needed. And thank you also uh, everyone for, for being here today and contributing to the discussion with, with your questions uh, on the chat. On the chat. You're welcome. It, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting to me to, to, to doing this speech. Thank you. Okay, then uh, thank you all. And uh, with that, we conclude uh, today's talk. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.